I tried filming this before lunch and I literally got through one book before I got hungry, gave up, and ate lunch. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are doing my, my February books and my March TBR. I'll put timestamps down below so you can like skip through the certain book if you want and if there's any blog posts I will also link them down below. First we're actually going back to January and we're going to talk about Wuthering Heights. So I technically read this in January. I hadn't finished this book by the time I filmed my January books. So that's why we're talking about it now. So Wuthering Heights is a classic gothic novel. It's technically a romance but like I don't know if I would call it a romance. Although if you ever see me looking down, it's because my notes are down below me. So yes, this is a classic novel. As you guys know, I have a classics collection that I haven't read and I'm trying to get through. So this is the one that I chose. For those of you who don't know the plot, even though it is a classic, I didn't know what the plot was going into it. So the story follows like a couple of different families through a couple of different generations which definitely is confusing at first because you're introduced to the present and then you go back to the past and then meet up to the present so it's a little confusing because there's a couple of repeating names and also like name like a bunch of like age names so it's definitely confusing at the beginning but yes it follows these families through generations and there is a lot of like hate and conflict in between the families. Like I said, all of the names are kind of confusing and also the like old language kind of just like also confused me. So I actually use the spark notes to help me understand what's going on. And I think there's no shame in like having to Google to understand an old novel. So what I did is I, I would read a chapter and then I would read the spark notes summary just to make sure that I caught all the information majority of the time I was actually fine I was able to catch everything but every once in a while there would be something that was like subtle but important like I missed a pregnancy so obviously that's important so yes I used spark notes to help me understand everything the language I'm combination with the plot meant that this was not my favorite novel I struggled to get through it especially because I read at night so like the language kind of like put me to sleep and the first half of the novel is just like confusing. I like the second half of the novel better because I just like the characters more. This is not exactly like a happy-go-lucky book. There's a lot of like negativity, there's a lot of like people hating people just because they hate them. And there's a lot of violence in here, there's a lot of sickness, like I swear. Everyone gets sick. A lot of people die you know just like google it you can just easily google the trigger wordings i did actually find a website that gave me the age ratings so this is 14 plus I didn't like the most of the book is narrated by melly who is the maid of the families i didn't really like her and she definitely was a biased narrator because she didn't like cert certain characters so i mean like i was kind of able to like see through it but just something to keep in mind maybe if you do like bias narrators you might like that something i didn't like is that like the main character like heathcliff is just like a bad person like through and through i will say that i did like the ending for not liking the whole entire novel the ending was good i did feel satisfied and i felt like i was like yes order is restored uh, I also felt really proud of myself once I did finish the novel because it was pretty hard to get through that at the end I was like, wow, I did it. <laughs> Go the star for me for reading this hard novel. So I gave this 3 out of 5 stars. I would only recommend this if you like classic novels. If you don't like classic novels, I don't think this will sway you. Or if you're looking to get into class classic novels, I don't think this is necessarily the introductory point that you should go to. I just wasn't a huge fan, but it wasn't like so bad that I had to put it down. Okay, and then up next, I returned to the Grishaverse. So if you didn't watch my January books, then you might not know, but I read Leah Bargadugo's Shadow and Bone, and I then read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. So this is a duology. There's like two books set in the same universe but with different characters and the plot is is that it's like a gang of people there's like six characters who come together and they do a heist so that's kind of like the broad summary before i forget both of these books are 14 plus we'll talk about kind of each book a little bit and then i'll go over dog <laughs> i can see so many neighbors y'all 
you already need to sell their dog. As well, took a little bit about each book and then the duology together. So I was really impressed that um, Lee was able to add another layer to her world. So this is set in a different country. Shawn and Bone was centered in Ravka, which is like a fictional version of Russia. This is set in Ketterdam, which is a fictional vers version of Amsterdam. I thought it was really fun to read. I've been to Amsterdam so I got a lot of the references. Like I said there's six characters in the novel and I think all the six characters are very unique and add different things to the story. My favorite being Nina. I just absolutely love her. I see a lot of herself in me or me in her. I don't know. I really liked it. I really related to her. Um, something I noticed that Lee has a habit of like doing a lot of like surprises and twists. I'm not sure like where the story's gonna go and I'm always surprised. So that's something I really liked. Uh, this was the first time I've ever like read a heist type novel. Lee Bardugo said that she got the inspiration from Ocean's Eleven which is a great franchise. I really enjoyed it. I've watched a lot of heists but never like read any and I actually really enjoyed reading it. And yeah I really enjoyed this one. And then the story continued in Crooked Kingdom and I didn't like this one as much as this first one because I found in the first one the plot was really clear of what was happening. There is a heist so you can like obviously there's like twists and turns within it but there was like a clear storyline of what was happening. And this one there was kind of like lots of like mini episodes and conflicts and when I started the novel like I had a faint idea of where I was going but like I wasn't really sure and because of that I just wasn't as engaged. Like I like to know a little bit where I'm going because you know then I want to get there. I want to read to find out where it's going but because I didn't know where I was going I was like eh. I will say though that the emotional connection that I felt to the characters deepened even more. I learned a lot more of the backstories of a lot of the characters and just like obviously the more you read a novel the more you connect with them so by the end I was like crying. I was like oh my god. This book definitely got me. There was there was a few parts right at the end where I was just like in bed just like sobbing. Oh and something else I did enjoy in Crooked Kingdom is that there was a couple of characters from A Shadow and Bone that were turned so that was kind of like nice little fun easter eggs of like characters that I loved from the previous novel returning. Overall I gave the duology five stars. Woo! First five star books of 2021. I loved the world that Lee had already created and it was continued in this but something that was missing from the past ones that I had here is that I really liked the cast of characters. I was really connected to a lot of them and I just liked the plot like I I was interested and it was really cool I thought it was like anything that I read yeah sure I had a couple of issues with it but those issues don't take away from how much I did enjoy these novels so like I said five stars for each of them I haven't read my blog post yet but that should be going up on Tuesday and to finish off the month I read King of Scars by Lee Bardugo I literally finished this last night. The Kingdom took me a little longer than I expected to get through so I kind of had to like really read this one quickly to be able to include it in this video and I was like I'm including it in this video I want to be done with the Grishaverse so I did it. That's definitely something I felt kind of nearing the end of the series is that I've read a lot of like why I think to see lately kind of getting a little bored of it so I almost felt like I should have taken a break in between uh Cricket Kingdom and this one but I continued onward. So I won't talk too much about the plot of this one because it is heavily based on the plot of Shadow and Bone and Six Crows but basically it features Nikolai, Zoya, and Nina. Nikolai and Zoya are from Shadow and Bone and Nina is from Six of Crows so definitely recommend reading the other two series before getting to this one. This is the first of a duology. The Second book is coming out in March. Probably won't read it in March though because it's coming out in hardcover and I have literally all the other books in paperback and I want to match the series. Plus like I said I kind of need like a break from the world so I'll wait until it comes in paperback. I'm not sure how put together my thoughts are going to be on this novel because I was literally shocked when I finished it. I was like whoa. I was totally impressed that like 
obviously now Lee has written like five books in the same universe and you're like where are you gonna go from here but somehow halfway through the novel in part two she kind of just like turns everything on its head and it's just like a whole entire like new take a new direction in the universe so I'm very impressed by that because sometimes it can be hard to create surprises and to create interest in a world that has like already been set. I enjoyed the novel it was nice to return to Ravka this one is set in Ravka and Furja Pure Furja that's where like Nina is so it was kind of like nice to return to characters that I knew and back to like the country that I knew it was kind of like a nice returning back to it so kind of like some of the things that I really liked how Lee you know adapted changed things up it was nice returning back to characters I knew one of the things I didn't like though is that this is from multiple points of view and Nina's is in a completely different country and doesn't really at all intermix with the other point of views and for that reason it, it kind of felt like it almost could have been two separate novels like I anticipate that they will intertwine in the future because why else would they be together but yeah they were really separate and I find myself not wanting to go back to Nina's point of view which is like always annoying when you have a character whose point of view you don't want to read and it's not because I don't like Nina like I said she's my favorite one of my favorite characters it's just I didn't find her storyline as interesting until the end of the novel oh and the ending was really good I think a lot of the fans of the series are going to be really happy with the ending because a character has returned that is a fan favorite so that was really good. I prefer to rate my series together but since the other one isn't out yet so far I'm giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I would kind of rate it as like Six of Crows is the best at 5 then King of Stars underneath and then Shadow of Bone underneath that at 4 stars and kind of I'll wrap up my thoughts on the Grisho verse as a whole in this video because I don't know when I'll read the next one but basically I enjoy it I think you should definitely read the universe in the series that it was released I think Lee did a really good job of explaining the whole entire universe in Shadow of Bone it's something that I mentioned that I thought she did a really good job but by the time you get to Six of Crows and King of Stars she's already kind of like established it and she kind of expects readers to reach out of bone so if you're going to six of crows you'll just like be confused about the universe and if you go to king of scars you're not gonna get anything it's just like nothing is explained so definitely read it in order that it was released yeah i'm totally excited to keep on reading in the universe i think leah's done a really good job also the day that i'm filming this the trailer was released for the tv show and i'm really excited one of the reasons why I wanted to read this series like now is because I want to be able to watch a TV show and I have really high hopes. Maybe I shouldn't because I could easily get disappointed but like just from the trailer it looks like they have really good production quality so I have my fingers crossed. So yeah those are the books that I read in February. Ooh. Very heavy YA fantasy so I'm excited for a break. I mentioned in my January TBR that I wanted to also read Debutantes in February and technically I'll still be reading it in February. Today is the 26th so I still have three days so I like could technically bang this out by the end of the month but I won't have time to include it in this video so I'll talk about it next month but um yes I won't I won't read the description again you can just go watch the other one or google it but something I did notice, and this is a reoccurring theme in my TBR, is that this is a sequel. I didn't realize it had a sequel, so I only realized it as I was in Goodreads and putting in that this is now my current read. And then I realized, oh, there's a second one. Which, by the way, I'll link my Goodreads down below if you want to check it out. I will read the first book. And then decide if I want to read the sequel. That's generally how I do things. It's pretty rare that I buy multiple books in a series. Like the only reason why I got all of Shadow and Bone is because like I knew I was gonna read it all to be able to read Six of Crows. I usually will only buy the first book then read the first book and then decide if I want to continue in the series. So I'll read the first one and then decide there's only one sequel so at least it's not like a huge series. So we'll see 
if I read it or not. And then, yeah, it might interrupt my TBR if I decide I do want to read it. Depending on, like, when the book comes in, then I'll, like, slip it in. So, we'll see. Yeah, this TBR might not go as planned because... I have a couple books that I realized that are not series. So. Now kind of going into my March TBR because that's technically part of February. So uh, we got four books because I'm hoping this won't take me long. This is only 300 pages and also the font is like huge. So it might not take me that long. So I picked another four. And like I said, there's two books on this TBR that are also series that I did. One I knew it was a series, but so this might change as I read more series, but let's get into it. The first, this is A Touch of Death by Rebecca Cruden. By Rebecca Cruden. I think that's how you say her name. Cruden. If you guys haven't realized by watching any of my videos, I'm horrible at pronouncing names. Just horrible. So if I ever butcher your name, I'm very sorry. Uh, Rebecca was kind enough to actually send this to me. I posted unboxing on my TikTok, but yes, she saw my blog and wanted to send me a book to review, so here it is. She actually has changed the cover since she sent it to me. It took forever to get here. Canada Postman, what can I say? But yes, this is the first book in a series. I believe there's five. Like I mentioned in Debutons, I'm gonna read the first book. If I really like the series, then I'll order the rest. They're available on Amazon, and yeah, we'll go from there. I'll read you the description. This is a YA fantasy dystopian mix. I know I said I wanted a break from fantasy, but you know, it's got a bit of dystopian. And I got a historical fiction in between, so. It's a long one, by the way. So, let me take a sip of water before I read. I'm sorry, reading out loud is not one of my strengths, but anyways. A thousand years into the future, the last of humanity live inside the wall of the totalitarian kingdom of Kutta. I hope I'm saying that right. It's the U-T-T-A. The ridge, look, there's a lot of words I don't know how to pronounce, by the way. Remember I just said I don't know how to pronounce names? Yeah. And Aeus? Aeus? Okay. The rich live in Aeus, the capital city of Kutta, sheltered from the famine and disease which ravaged the rest of the kingdom. Yet the riches and power only go so far, and even Anishians can be executed. It is only by the will of the king that Nate and Taros, son of the king's favorite, is spared from the gallows after openly dissenting. But when he is released from prison, Nate disappears. In stark contrast, Catherine Tanian, Tanian? Catherine Tanian has spent her entire life comfortable and content. The daughter of the king's hangman in love with Tom, his younger brother, her life has always been easy, ordered, and comfortable. That is, where it doesn't concern Nate. His actions sully not only his future, but theirs. Unlike Tom, Catherine has never forgiven him. Two years pass without a word, and then one night, Nate returns. But things with Nate are never simple, and when, and when one wrong move turns their lives upside down, the only thing left is to run where the king's guards cannot find them. That land. See those wild untamed lands which stretch around the great walls of the kingdom filled with mutants and rabbits. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. So the next book on my TBR is an older book. I like to kind of alternate in between ones that are new into book my bookshelf and ones that have been on my bookshelf for a while. So the next book is actually also a non-fiction as well. This is Emotions Revealed. I got this for my birthday a couple years ago. Still haven't read it, sorry. Emotions revealed recognizing faces and feelings to improve communication and emotional life. I want to try and read more nonfiction this year because I'm mainly a fiction reader, but nonfiction is good. I will say that I am pretty picky though about my nonfiction. Let me read the description. Oh, and this was featured in a Malcolm Gladwell book. Um, so we're now Psychologist Paul Ekman explains the roots of our emotional responses from anger to fear to sadness to happiness and show how these emotions cascade across our faces, revealing information to those who can die who can decipher who can decipher the clues. Ekman's research and practical training were prominently featured in Malcolm Gladwell's bestseller Blink and the insights and emotions revealed provide us with the skills to recognize feelings in our spouses, children, business colleagues, even strangers on the street, pausing the thing. I've not read Malcolm Gladwell's Blink, but I have read Outliers, and I also do have The Tipping Point on my shelf. 
I'd like to read all of his books, I think. Back to the synopsis. Ekman translates his research into practical mind-opening guide to reading the emotions of those around us. He explains what triggers emotions and whether we can control them, shows how our body signals to others whether we are slightly sad or truly anguished, peeved, or enraged, and teaches us to distinguish between a polite smile and a genuine thing. Packed with unique exercise and known photographs, and a new chapter on emotions and lying that discusses how to identify possible deceit hotspots in everyday life. Emotions Revealed is an indispensable resource for navigating our emotional world. So yeah, I took a course. I studied communication to the university if you didn't know that and I have taken a little bit of like physical communication or what's the word for it now? Physical? There's a word for this type of communication. So yeah, that's why I got this. Someone gifted me this book. I think it was my mom who gave it to me. So yes, I am curious to read it. Uh, it might take me a while to get through. And I've definitely learned my lesson and I will be taking in-depth notes because that's how I learn from non-fictions. Okay, next, like I said, we're going from old book to new book. So now my new book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This was um, the other one that my brother got me for Christmas. So, you know, I want to read it. This one is quite popular. This came out in 2017 and I've definitely seen a lot of people talk about it both on like bestseller list and book of the year and also on book talk for people who read adult, adult books because this is an adult fiction. Taylor Jenkins Reid, her book Daisy Jones and the Six, that one is was pretty popular. I heard that one and this one might be adapted into TV shows or movies. Anyways, reclusive Hollywood icon Evelyn Hugo is finally ready to tell her truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. But when she chooses unknown magazine reporter Monique Grant to write her story, no one is astonished more than Monique herself. Determined to use this opportunity to jumpstart her career, Monique listens in fascination from making her way to Los Angeles in the 1950s to leaving show business in the 80s. And of course, the seven husbands along the way, Evelyn upstools a tale of ruthless ambition, unexpected friendship, and a great forbidden love. But as Evelyn's story nears its conclusion, it becomes clear that her life intersects with Monique's own in a tragic and irreversible ways. Brennan reads signature talent for creating complex, likable characters. This is a mesmerizing journey through the splendor of old Hollywood into sobering realities of the present day as two women struggle with what it means and what it costs to face the truth. So yeah, I've heard really good things about it, so I'm excited to read it. And then we're gonna finish, march off, who knows, like I said, these books are a series that I didn't know about, and so is this next one. So I picked Temptus, this is one that has been on my shelf for a while. Also, I got it for five dollars, so we'll see how good a five dollar book is. And like I said, I didn't know this was a series, there's two other books, so if I like it, I will order the other ones and read them, but this is a uh, sci-fi. I don't read a lot of sci-fi, so I thought it would be good to read one. The year is 2009. 19-year-old Jackson Meyer is a normal guy. He's in college, has a girlfriend, and can travel back through time. But it's not like the movies. Nothing changes in the present after his jumps. It's just harmless fun. That is, until the day strangers burst into Jackson and his girlfriend Holly, and during the struggle with Jackson, Holly is fatally shot. In his panic, Jackson accidentally jumps back to two years to 2007, but it's not like his previous time jumps. He's now stuck in 2007 and can't get back to the future. Desperate to save Holly but unable to return to his rightful year, Jackson begins to learn what he can about his abilities and meets Holly for the first time again. Soon he discovers that nothing about his life is what it appears to be, but it's not long before the people who shot Holly in 2009 come looking for Jackson in the past and the enemies of time and capital. Well, so but nothing to recruit or kill this powerful young time traveler. Piecing together the clues about his father, the enemies of time, and himself, Jackson must decide how far he's willing to go to save Holly. But yeah, we'll um, see how this is. So that is it for this video, guys. Please let me know in the comments down below what you're currently reading. And if you've read any of these books, please let me know what you thought no spoilers for the books on my tbr please like this video if you want to see more book videos and check out my blog i post a lot of book reviews there as well so yeah guys that is it for this video okay